another episode of Automotive Projects. It's Ae here. I know we just released uh, episode four. It's gonna be episode four, part two. making this video is because we got a lot of messages on people having questions you know when I started building this suspension for the Seneca I was like man I ain't got the money to buy one straight up you know I got kids to feed I got turtles to feed dogs my wife's got to eat I gotta take her out to the on the weekends gentlemen y'all know what I'm talking about it takes a lot of money to be a car building husband stop the cap <laughs> but with that being said we found the most economic way to build a suspension all while staying on their budget. So, um, this is the A86 Corolla housing that we, we went with. Uh, and on the last episode, we cut out the uh, the perch on it. Now, this is what it, what it looks like. So, we got a lot of messages saying, hey, how did you do it? Uh, what did you do? What shock did you use? Um, and we're gonna explain all that in detail. It's gonna be a fast video, informative video. So stay tuned with us, guys. If you enjoyed uh, episode four, go like it. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. And please help us share the video so that YouTube can generate and, and move out, push out our videos so that we can reach out more people that they can have fun watching it. They can learn something new and they can save, most importantly, a lot of money for those diapers for your kids. So stay tuned with us, guys. We're gonna make it quick, informative, and it's gonna be a, a episode to watch. Thank you. All right, first and foremost, this is an, a stock A86 um, casting. So there's, it's basically bone stock. Now, one of the first things I wanna talk about is the shock. A lot of people are like, okay, what well, shock did you use? Uh, the travel on it. So I used a shock out of, a, I believe, an 89 MR2. So the 89 mr 2 I believe they're all the same, but I went with uh, KYB, um, and this fits very, very uh, good. I think you, you need like a two millimeter spacer in the bottom, but we'll get to that in just a minute. But yeah, this is what we use, the uh, KYB shock. Now this is the stock housing. One of the reasons why I went with the 86 is because there's a lot more parts available for it. Uh, and yeah, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and, and shorten out the casting by 40 millimeters. Now, you're probably asking why I asked why. I did a lot of research. I got a lot of buddies that asked why. So the reason why we're shortening it up 40 millimeters is because of the travel of the shock. So this is the shock right here. And if we were to put it inside of the casting, this is literally how much travel we're gonna have. I don't know if the camera can catch. So we would have that much travel with the, sh with the spring already uh, compressed in there. So the reason why we shorten it 40 millimeters is so that the casting can come down and it can give the shock more travel. That way when your tires hit, Houston Road, y'all know every Houston Road is busted up. Yeah, so whenever your shocks, your tires hit the, the road pavement, the puddle, uh, the shocks can absorb a lot more of that action. So that is why we decided to shorten it up 40 millimeters. Now, the, re the way that I, I uh, decided to measure this, um, I use one of these uh, digital, digital calipers right here. Very inexpensive, you can get it at Harbor Freight. Uh, so yeah, I basically, Whenever you cut the perch off, you're gonna get the seam right in the middle. It's like this little weld part right in the middle. So what I did was, I, I uh, after much research, a lot of videos that I saw, I actually found out that that's probably the best way to do it. So what I did was I measured 40 millimeters right in between where the perch was, the perch cut out. Now be careful guys, whenever you're cutting off the perch, me personally, uh, I drained all the oil out, but I went, I went uh, from back to front. But I basically try to go flat right on the welds. You don't wanna go too deep in, you don't wanna cut through uh, the casting because it's gonna be a big problem, guys, a big problem. So just be careful when you're doing it. Uh, go all the way around if you need to, chop uh, as much as you can off and then grab a hammer and just kind of pound it forward. That's the way I did it, it worked out for me, no issues. So yeah, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and measure it 40 millimeters and mark it. So right there, I'm at 40 millimeters. So this is what I, I, I did. I measured right in between there, 40 millimeters. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark it. 
So I kind of have it already pre-marked, but basically you make your lines, you mark it, you mark it, and you can, you can, uh, you can create a template, something, uh, you can grab a piece of cardboard and measure from the top without the gland nut. You can take the gland nut off. What you guys can do is once you mark it for the first time, you can kind of grab a piece of cardboard, measure from top to the first marking, and just measure it all the way around. So you can get yourself a nice clean, uh, nice clean cut. There's a whole, a whole bunch of ways to do it. So if you got a better way and it works for you, do it. Uh, I mean, sometimes there's there's multiple ways to do things, but that's the way I did it. I marked it. Mine's already pre-marked, but basically I went around uh, with the cardboard. I sized it all the way around and then I measured it back up. I measured it back up and yeah 40 millimeters I measured it all the way around so we already got a measure now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna cut it so we have our strut casing um, clamped down to the table just so it won't go anywhere and we already have our uh, strut casing measured here at 40 millimeters so I guess the only thing to do is just to, to cut but before that I always say Two eyeballs is better than one. <laughs> oh my God. With that being said, please guys, take precaution and wear your safety goggles. You just never know what could happen. So be careful, let's get it done. All right guys, so after um, fiddling with this for a while, we were able to cut 40 millimeters off and we'll go ahead and measure it to make sure it's precise. <laughs> we'll be back commercial right away. Yeah, so Whenever you're about to weld this thing, a lot of things can go wrong. The worst thing that can go wrong is that your, your casting is sitting like this. And it's crooked. That's the worst thing you can do. So we want to make sure that we are welding this thing perfectly straight. One of the things that I used and I got this trick off of another welder is uh, this piece of steel. It's like a corner piece of steel. This thing is the best for trying to uh, just tack it so that you can have a straight casting and then you can work around it. All right guys, so we were able to clamp the casting on this piece of steel. Uh, everything is good. Make sure that everything's flushed against the steel on the uh, corner and then make sure that your, your clamps are very durable. That way when you hit the, the, the tack to hold it in place, nothing moves. So I already have my, my pre-settings done. I did a prior one, so everything should be set. I'm simply gonna tack it. And ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. We just tacked it all the way around. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab our wire brush and clean it up. And we're gonna show you how it looks as I'm welding it, um, I want you guys to be very cautious that you don't want to hold the weld there for too long because you can actually burn a hole. We haven't burned a hole. Just want to clear that up. But um, just do one side, maybe about an inch or less, and then rotate it. Let it cool down for a little bit and hit it again. Otherwise, um, this thing can get warped, and it's going to be just as bad as cutting the crooked or welding the crooked. So take your time.
Woo. Now that's exclusive. That's unintentional and that's real. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, never have a rag that's been dipped in some paint thinner behind you while you're welding. Lesson number 56 on the book. I'm gonna let that burn out and we'll continue. All right guys, so we um, ended up Grinding all the well marks and it looks pretty good, pretty even. Uh, if I need to hit it a little bit more, I will. So one of the common things about these perch, and a lot of people have this question, is whenever you try to put it on, if you can see, it won't even go on. Um, I mean, you can try to pound it in from the top and try to force it in there, but off the back, it will not go in. Uh, I myself and a couple of people that you know, I, I've seen them do it. They also had the question at the beginning, why isn't it working? It, did it send me the wrong one? They probably call, whatever. No, they didn't send you the wrong one. I think a lot of times it just got, has a lot of build up dirt on the, on the uh, casting. So what I would do is I would go ahead and just grind it all the way from, from maybe about an inch off this bracket up and just take all that junk off, all that junk off and uh, yeah, take it off and you should be able to fit it on there. All right, guys, so I think we have it to a good point. Um, a good point where we can kind of put it over and then we can grab a hammer and, and gently, gently pound it around. It should go in slightly. See, once you get it over that little hump, it should kind of slide all the way to, to down. And, and if you grind it correctly on the, uh, on the joint of the two, it should come all the way down, wherever you need it. I kind of measured it all the way to the adjustment was pretty much almost leveled, leveled to the end of the casting. And that's where I, I, I set the, uh, the perch and then I welded it. So you guys can do it however you want. This is the way I'm gonna do it on mine. It works perfectly fine. And uh, I'm, gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tack it Measure it, tack it, and then show you guys the end result. All right, so I went ahead and tacked it. That thing's not moving anywhere. As you can see, it's got a lot of uh, heat that builds up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start tacking and welding. You guys are gonna finish welding all the way around. Remember, weld a little piece, take your time, let it cool off, weld enough. there's no rush. If you wanna get it done right, you gotta take your time with it. Um, I would weld the bottom. Usually what I do is I, I, I uh, the technique they, they call it circle ease. So basically you come back and it's like a cursive E, cursive E. And I use it all the way around to fill in that puddle and really catch, you know, the, uh, the actual housing with the perch and it, it works very good. I'm just gonna mock it up really quick. So um, just to show you guys and wrap it up, it's very easy. Bam, it's just a quick mock-up and you guys are good to go. Uh, remember, I, I, I didn't know too much about, you know, welding and stuff like that. I had to learn, but after that, you can kind of, you know, take it back apart. Well, in my case, I'm gonna have to take it back apart because I'm gonna paint it, make it look real nice and then throw everything back on there. But this is just a quick rough draft for the, for the viewer out there. If, if this video has been really good content for your eyes, please guys, share it comment tell somebody else to subscribe let's go ahead and push the video out i just saved you a bunch of money trust me so this is going to be the best route to go in my opinion the cheapest route but the, the durable route as well remember in the future we're going to also be using the rx7 calipers with the mini cooper s rotor from techno toy tuning uh, and, and we'll, we'll be bringing you guys update as we put it back together but thank you guys for watching 
Like I said, if this video has been good content to you, go ahead and like, subscribe. If you haven't already watched the other videos, go watch them, enjoy the content, and we have another video coming out for you guys soon. So stay tuned. Thank you guys, we love you from the bottom of our hearts, and we hope to see you guys back to this channel, the video soon. Take care of yourself, guys. Boom, out.